Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. Wanted to uh, take a few minutes here and, and uh, recap a trade that we did for the uh, Apple earnings release that just came out for their uh, second quarter. It was a combination of a, of, a, of a long scalp and also an options play. It's something that we do from time to time when the proper setup presents itself. So what I want to talk about is the, the actual setup and also how you uh, go about then leveraging up uh, those initial profits with options for a low risk options play into the earnings. So it's a multifaceted trade, but it, it's really actually not that complex. But uh, what you really have to do is recognize the setup and then uh, and then manage the trade properly. So uh, let's take a look at that and uh, and first uh, take a peek at what the actual setup was. All right, so here's here's a look at the Apple daily chart, and you can see that. Obviously, Apple has had this protracted decline here, but uh, but just just before the earnings, something was starting to happen that was uh, particularly interesting. We had we had this support line here, which had been holding uh, price from this major gap down to the upside here, but it had, had recently just given way. We had these two uh, very bearish range expansion candles that broke down through this prior support area. But what it did was it actually set up. Uh, one of our buy signals here, which is which is one of my favorites, which is the camouflage buy signal, and uh, I've got this arrow pointing to this green candle right here. It's a green candle only because the open was below the settlement, so it settled above the open on the day. So the buyers on the day made a net advance over where the stock opened, but it was still lower on the day. So this is still one day down, two days down. This is a third day down. But the thing is, while it was a down day, it really didn't have the characteristic of the previous two down candles. These two candles opened kind of in range, closed near the low. This one gapped up a little bit, expanded the range to the downside, took out the prior day's low, and closed below that. This candle, in fact, opened, ran higher on the day, and they ultimately stuffed it back down here uh, to close lower on the day, but it did close above the open. So after being down the previous day, this candle's down as well. It's at range low on the chart here, but it closed above the day's open. So that makes it a camouflage buy signal. And that was the first thing that got me interested in the chart. Now, you'll see these, these candles elsewhere on the charts, and they're all very important. But here's, a, here's the thing. They're extremely important when they come at range high or range low on the chart. Let me just turn your attention back here a little bit too, and there's there's two other examples of this uh, on the chart here on the on to the downside though. We had we had this move to the downside here with this strong candle to the upside. So here's one day up, here's a second day up, but you notice this is a red-bodied candle. So this close, while the candle's up nicely on the day, the close is well below the open. And what happened after that? It precipitated this decline down here. If you look at this candle right here, the one that's just below my cursor and under the uh, green number 8 here, this is also a camouflage sell signal. We had this little pivot to the upside here. We were running fairly well here, but here's an up day followed by another up day, but this up day is actually a camouflage sell signal because we closed below the day's open and that precipitated this decline, a little curl up here, and then we actually got down to this camouflage buy signal. So these are the things that we want to pay attention to. When you see this at range low, this really jumped out at me. This is range low. We had just broken down below the support line. Everybody was shunning Apple saying that, oh, here comes the next wave down. Well, the next day, the next wave down I was anticipating was only going to be these two candles and then they were going to come in and start to buy this. So what I want to talk about is the subsequent candle. I'm just going to squeeze this over one more candle. You can see the next candle here is to the upside and this is the key trade. This was the one that set up the long options play. How did it set that up? Well, we were in there buying this uh, this morning, looking for strength off of this camouflage buy signal. So I'm going to zoom down to the five minute chart and take a detailed look at the next day's trading session. All right, so here's a chart looking at the, uh, the next day's trading. This is just a one day chart. This is in the five minute time frame, very small, small time frame but one that I like a lot for a couple of different reasons. But nonetheless, this is what we had. This is the, the close that Friday that produced the camouflage buy, buy signal. 
The next day, we opened up here. We gapped up at about 292.50. So I was looking to get long on a gap fill here against the camouflage buy signal in the in the bigger time frame, in the daily time frame. We never got down there. Ne that never happened. So then you kind of have to get a little bit more aggressive. So what do you do then? Well, you say, well, okay, if they can't fill the gap, then I want to buy this when it clears the opening range. So what I did was I set the opening range at about the first 15 minutes. So after the first 15 minutes, here's 5, 10, 15 minutes. These three candles make up the first 15 minutes. So if we crossed back above the opening range, I wanted to get long and look for a long scalp and a, and a, and a, and a, and a nice strong push off of that camouflage buy signal. So we pivoted higher here and broke through the long trigger at 394.50. After we broke above 394.50, the obvious stop, uh, you don't want to, I mean, if you really want to, you can risk it back down to the gap fill, but that, that's, kind of, that's kind of far and it's kind of getting beyond what, it, what an actual true scalp would be. So I set the, the stop loss at 292.50, which would be essentially the opening area of this candle. So as long as the bulls can pivot this and, and hold it above the day's open, you're probably going to have a strong session. If they if they lose the day's open, flatten out the trade then, and then look look down for the gap fill for a secondary entry. But we did break above that uh, 394 long trigger. We did uh, have a, had a pretty good little imp pretty good impulse here to start with, but it backed and filled, but but it never really breached and broke under this 392.50 stop loss. We kind of ran up into this area here and then started to roll back down again. At this point, I had my initial profit target at 398.50. So 398.50 was a technical level on the daily chart and also afforded us a 2 to 1 risk reward versus our 394 long entry and our stop loss. So we're risking $1 to make $2 on the upside here at the minimum. So it took, qu took quite a ways here. But uh, oftentimes, you know, it, it, it takes time for, the, for the, the real character of a stock to change. And the important thing was the stock was changing character actually on this candle from that whole decline to the downside. So it ultimately got to this, this 398.50 initial profit objective. So that's where I sold half of the trade. But I was using the, uh, the Comer, which is a uh, very important intraday. You can see that there's... Uh, these magenta colored lines uh, numbers above the uh, actual bars here. And so what I'm looking to do is without getting into the details of the Comer study is I'm looking for this to run all the way to 13 bars before I'm looking for an exhaustion in a reversal in the trend. Now remember this is just a five minute trend so you know it's, you're gonna get a, usually in the five minute time frame you get about one a day if you get an impulsive move. So while we got up and got to the initial profit objective at 398.50 we were only on candle number eight here of the one through thirteen exhaustion count so that kept me in the trade a little bit longer as long as we were still closing and holding above the 10 EMA until we got to the 13 exhaustion candle up here I made a notation that we did get the 13 that's where the final scalp was uh, was released on the day really nice profit it was actually even probably a little bit better than I was was hoping for. Long entry was 394.50, sold a piece at 398.50, and then sold more as it was approaching 402. So that's a that's a really nice day on a scalp basis. But the scalp is only half of this trade. That was done and closed. Those profits were booked and netted to the account. And then and then the second half of the trade is really where the fun stuff happens. So let me uh, let me describe that for you. Let me change back to the daily time frame now. All right, so now we're back into the daily time frame here. We were anticipating a strong day to the upside following our camouflage buy signal on the daily. We uh, used our scalping techniques to get in, use proper risk reward, use a, use, a, use a reasonable stop loss that we honored, and then have a price objective and a methodology to get out of that trade for the maximum possible profit, which we did. So here's this little candle here to the upside. Now, it doesn't look like much, but this booked us a real nice profit to work with. So what I wanted to do was going, going into the earnings, I wanted to monetize that scalp profit into a long call position ahead of the earnings. So essentially, it's a very low risk trade because I'm not risking my own money. I'm just risking what I made that day in the scalp, plus a little bit more to round up the contract.
So what we really had was we went into the earnings play with a pretty nice with a pretty nice scalp profit. What I did is I rolled into the uh, the May of 405 calls at a cost of about uh, uh, 12 and three quarters because I wanted to go out far enough to make sure that uh, that uh, I wasn't going to get whacked with any theta or any time decay uh, until until we had a, you know time for an impulse uh, after the earnings. So what we're, what we're looking for is is the earnings reaction to be positive. We're looking for the earnings reaction to be positive because we had a protracted decline. We broke key support, had a final washout here on volume. We have two aggressive candles to the downside. We got our camouflage buy signal. We monetized that camouflage buy signal into a long scalp and then rolled those profits into the long call position for the earnings. And the earnings came out and the stock the stock gap down significantly initially. Unfortunately, this is this this was the gut check moment. Was the uh, the the long calls that we paid just under thirteen for open to four dollars. But that's okay. It's not fun, but it's all right because what we're doing is we're working that we we moved up into the daily time frame now. We've got our camouflage buy signal behind us. So so now we're looking for this washout to work to our advantage and start lifting the stock to the upside. So now I'm just going to scroll forward now to the uh, to the recent data. Everything's the same. We have the long the long call call trade on. Here's your uh, here's your opening after the earnings it opens down and closes at the dead high. So we get back to almost even on the options on the day. But remember, it wasn't a stressful trade. It wasn't my my money I was putting up for the calls. I was putting up the market's money because I was really just rolling over the profits that I made from this long scalp into the earnings. Now remember, here's a, here's a key little nuance. More times than not, if a stock is going to perform well after the earnings release, there's going to be some positive performance right before it. And conversely to the downside, if a stock is up and it acts terrible into earnings, more times than not, the, the reaction after the earnings is not going to be so great. So we have all these things working for us on the long side. We closed up here, got to about even. It took a couple days to to, to, to break back above this breakdown level. We pivoted back above that level and went right back up into our price objective. Our price objective for the for the long calls was our static trend line here off the seeker count here, one through nine to the downside. So if we once we broke back above the ten EMA on a closing basis and followed through, that gave the chart positive momentum to the upside. And that put this dashed line here into play. This is plotted automatically off the uh off the secret program, but that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for about 455 as a ballpark. Started piecing out of options when we started approaching that. Sold some at um, paid paid you know 12 and three quarters. Made the first sale at 43 dollars. Second sale at 54.40, and then 55.27 when we start on this day here when we roll back to the downside here. So in addition to the seeker um, static trend line here, there was also an open gap here for the market to target. So there was kind of a double draw here to the upside. We had the static trend line off the seeker and then we also had this gap to be filled. The gap did get filled on this candle. We went back to the downside so we can cross that off the to-do list. But uh you know it was it was a really profitable trade and the average sale on the um, on the uh on the options was was right around 50 bucks after paying less than 13 for them. Now remember now the key thing here is is that we just didn't didn't open up our wallet and just take a speculation on on an earnings call that's just gambling well we didn't we weren't gambling we were trading we were looking for a setup before the earnings to build a cushion we took that cushion we monetized it into a long call position we had we had a, a price target that was objective from the tr from the chart and technical in nature and then we just worked the trade up into that area so you know if you ever see, you know, an opportunity like this, definitely do not pass on it, especially if you have the the uh, the good fortune to have a successful uh trade ahead of it that you can roll over and monetize into the options. And also, uh keep your eyes open for that uh, that camouflage signal, whether it's a buy or a sell. Uh I like it in the daily time frame. I don't really use it so much in the smaller time frames, but on the daily time frame, uh, my eyes are always open for that because it is it's a very key uh technical piece of information that uh, that many many technicians and traders do miss well I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and uh, if you have any questions uh, you can uh, hit me up uh, as you always do and uh, look forward to speaking with you again 
This has been Rich for TradeSite. Thanks for listening.